Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna address a question that I get frequently and that's what is my process as far as using the wood stove? How do I light it? What are my damper settings set at? Some of those things. So I'm gonna go through my process. I'm really not a big fan of kindling or any of that and so I'll just kind of work through how I do it, how I set it up and then you guys can kind of decide. A lot of our customers, they have their own method. And like I say, whatever works for you is completely fine with me. It's simply building a fire. So I'll show you my process and then you can decide if that works for you or if you've got something that works better, I'd love to hear about it. So anyways, let's get going. So where we're going to start out first, you can see this one's got some ash already in it. I'm not going to go through and clean this out um, just because I know we're going to have more fires in it. So when you do, though, there is an ash pan here at the bottom in this particular stove that you can take out, dump it. I never use that just because the camps are sealed so tight that I know as soon as I take that ashtray and as soon as I open that front door, there's going to be a draft of air or whatever come in and I'm going to be wearing that ash. So I don't ever use that. I have a little shop vac that once this is cooled down, I'll go through and just suck whatever ash out. Now, depending on how you burn this will determine how much ash is in there also. So if you burn it super hot, chances are you're not going to have a lot of ash. If you dampen it down, way down, you're going to get more ash. So just the process that I use, there's also this little damper. Well, it's not a damper, it's a shaker. What it does is it'll move this plate inside. I can zoom in and kind of show you what's going on there. But it'll shake and it'll shake some of that down into the ash. It's a cool feature, but I wouldn't say it's the most effective. Like I say, the, the best thing that I've found is just a little shop back. You can get them battery powered or, or whatever. Once you get home, plug it in suck that out so but the first thing that I do generally when I come into these camps okay, if I've been traveling um, I always dampen these down okay so we've got a damper here we've got our two fresh air intakes here and then we have a damper up on this stove pipe not sure if that one's in the frame of the the camera or not but it's a butterfly valve and it sits the exact same direction as what that handle does so when it's closed, it's sitting like this and it's just blocking that pipe off. When you turn it open, it's going to allow everything to come through. So usually when I get to my location, these should all be closed. And the reason I close them is if I do get a good gust of wind or whatever traveling down the road, I don't want any ash to come in here. Now that's not to say that if you leave these open, you're going to get ash because I never have. And, and I'll be honest, there's been times that I've failed to close all my dampers and I haven't had any issue. Um, but it's just good practice. Like I say, close them up and then you don't have to worry about anything that way. So once I get there, this one is threaded. This is a glass wash. Okay, so if I undo this, and I don't have to unthread it all the way. I just want it loose to where it'll slide. Okay, if I undo it just a hair to where it slides, what's going to happen is when this stove heats up and this metal expands, it's going to be extremely hard for me to adjust that. And so I always go a couple of turns just so that it's super loose to where it slides really easy. That way, once this stove heats up and I decide I really want to dampen it down, all I gotta do is just push that. Whereas if it's super tight, it might have expanded enough to where I can't move it without unthreading it more and it's going to be hot. So I just loosen that a couple of turns to where it's fairly loose. And then I'm gonna open these dampers on the bottom. Now, these ones, the way, because these camps are sealed so tight, there's nowhere for this stove to pull combustible air from. And so we bring our air in from the outside of the camp and it comes in through this bottom and then is distributed. You can see these holes. 
Okay, there's holes also on the bottom. One of these controls the air coming in from the back and one of them controls the air coming in from the bottom. And so as you dampen these down, you can kind of play with that to see what works best. As I played with this stove, I don't know that one does any more than what the other one does. And so I usually just do a combination of one. But yeah, you could close this one all the way down, this one all the way open, or vice versa. And like I say, I haven't found much difference whether the air is coming from the bottom or the back. As long as that's getting air, it's going to burn. So to start it out, we're going to open everything all the way up. Okay, and then here in my wood box, I just keep some of these. They're probably two by two. They're just scrap two by fours that I use when I get material. They're cut in eight inch pieces. And like I say, I'm not a big fan of kindling, so I don't want to keep a bunch of small stuff. So I usually just use what I burn. What I'll do is I'll put two of these side by side. Okay, a little gap in the middle. And then I have these fire starters. I couldn't tell you uh, make or anything. I had a customer that brought me these. I don't even know what they're made of or anything. I just know that they work super well. So, but I'm sure you can get fire starters from just about anywhere. You can use newspaper, um, but like I say, I, I just like things as clean as I can get them. And so these have worked out super good. So what I'll do is I'll just light two of these up. Okay, once I get them started, I'll just set them right in between those two pieces of board. And I'm pretty sure it's wax that's in these that keeps them. And they burn for a long time. Super. So if you can get your hands on some or know someone that makes them, great. And then I'll just continue to build this up. And this will all be dependent on too how much wood you want to burn. Right now, this camp, it's it's probably in the um, low teens outside. So it's pretty dang cold inside the camp. So I'm going to burn quite a bit of wood just to get this warmed up. But yeah, I just kind of build it up just like Jenga blocks. Just keep stacking them. And as you can see, that thing's already started off. No kindling. These stoves draw super good to where I don't have to use any gas or anything to get them to start. But I'll just fill that up. And like I say, once it's warm in here, I don't generally use this much wood just because once it's warm in here, they're insulated so well that I don't have to worry about, yeah, putting out a bunch of heat. So... I'll let that burn. You can close the door, leave the door cracked, and it'll take off. It'll draw some more air through there. Um, but as you can see, I'm not getting any smoke from inside the stove. It's already drawn up the flue. So one big thing with these is, so like I said, this is a glass wash. What it'll do is it pulls air in from here, and then it'll bring it down along this shelf and right down the front of that glass, keeping that glass clean to where you don't get a lot of soot build up. Now, if I were to dampen this down right now without it burning real good, you're gonna get a lot more build up on your glass as well as in your stove pipe. So I like to let these get burning for a little while before I start making any adjustments. And yeah. It seems like, like I say, this is kind of my method. I'm sure there's other people that have something that works and I'd love to hear what works for you guys. So um, if you do have something, leave it in the comments and yeah, others can learn from it, I guess. So anyways, that's the method that I use. As, as this gets burning, I'll generally dampen these down halfway. And like I said, this is, depends on what temperature I want. But I find if I do a combination of all of these, generally I'll use leave my glass wash open all the time just because it helps to keep that clean. And I usually can dampen it down enough between these and my flu damper um, to regulate that to what I want it to. Another thing I will add while on this, if you are looking for something as far as cleaning this, say you've used it all year and you haven't cleaned it, I found if you just take a wet rag, and this was passed on from a customer too, so 
like I say, I'm learning things as well from people that are using them. But if you take a damp rag, get a little ash on it, rub it, it gives just enough grit to take that right off. And, and it's about the best thing that I've found as far as cleaning. So anyways, hope this is helpful for you camp owners. For those of you that haven't bought a camp yet, this is a selling point. So anyways, thanks for watching.